Hi, welcome to another video. I um, had some free time, so um, I just finished uh, one group class and another individual class. So I have some free time and um, I was thinking to film, but there's so many topics that I have on my uh, mind and that I was writing down. Uh, and some of them are related to IELTS and TOEFL mostly. Uh, if you have some new ideas uh, or some specific questions for me when it comes to uh, these tests or when it comes to English proficiency, you can write them down and um, you can email me actually. And I will think about um, making vid videos about that, but I don't want to repeat myself. There have been a couple of videos of, um, like that before. Um, so honestly, there has been one student who asked me to talk more about uh, my what I mentioned in the previous video about my experience with anxiety. Um, she is actually a student from China and um, she's somebody that is experiencing anxiety. And uh, to her, um, it comes in a form that she cannot, um, well, she, she, I'm not sure if she completely cannot go out of her house, but she stays most of her time in her house. And um, she's super talented. Um, an artist, a graphic designer, and she would like to go abroad and to study graphic design. So when I heard that story, um, I just wanted to relate with her and help her, even though I'm not a therapist. Uh, I'm just somebody who knows a lot about that because of my personal experience. And it's not something that is easy to talk about. Definitely, um, I'm not sure how to prepare to talk about this topic. Um, and um, where to begin. But let's say I will just share my experience. And then again, if uh, there are some questions about certain things that I mentioned, I will do another video to to explain more about that if I wasn't clear enough. So if you're interested in, in something like that, or if you know that somebody that is close to you or that you know is suffering from, from any type of anxiety, um, or depression, but I will mostly talk about anxiety, you can um, you can listen to the video and maybe it will help. Okay, so to begin with, I would like to just share a little bit of backstory about me so that you know that you can compare and see what anxiety actually does to a person. So at my character naturally is very curious. So I, I'm somebody who who likes to learn more and go further, go beyond. Is um, so basically up until. Um, that year when I started suffering from anxiety, I was, um, uh, how can I say, fearless almost, like not in a sense that I was brave, it's more like that I didn't know about the dangers. Um, my brain did not, um, you know, analyze situations very well. Sometimes I would find myself in very, very scary situations or I, I would be very reckless or I would do something that was scary to other people. Um, I wasn't afraid of a lot of things, to be honest. And that's why I uh, chose to uh, study journalism, because as a journalist, you have to, you know, you have to follow the story. You cannot be afraid of anything. And so um, this is something that I thought I was going to be good at. And um, as a person, again, I was very extroverted. Um, a lot of friends, a lot of activities during the month, during the year. Um, I was interested in a lot of things um, from, you know, art, music, uh, to just daily regular things. It was just like a, um, a balanced character who is a little bit more on the outgoing side, let's say. So I was not born an introvert or somebody who's a homebody who likes to stay at home and stuff like that. So um, in 2013, I remember I was uh, doing my master program, so I was studying filmmaking, and uh, we were uh, doing a project. I was helping a friend to shoot a film, and um, I came back from that project that went really well. We finished it, and um, I remember I had a flu, and um, I already made plans for the next year, so it was like beginning of the year of 2014, maybe. And um, I was living in a bigger city then. Um, the situation was kind of hectic because I was um, 
a lot of my friends were leaving town, uh, changing their lives. Uh, I had no idea, will I get a scholarship? Will I move? It was a lot of uncertainty around that time, um, which I don't know if that contributed to anxiety. I don't know until this day, like what actually caused it. But I remember I had my first anxiety attack. I wouldn't call it a panic attack because a full panic attack is um, something that happens suddenly and it really engages your whole body. So you uh, you start sweating and you um, you're out of breath. You um, you just you you start feeling as you are going to die. So that's how would I, I would describe a panic attack. An anxiety attack would be more like um, you feel overwhelmed and you don't know what's going on and your body reacts in a way sometimes your heart races, sometimes your um, vision is kind of um, distorted in a way. So th the street seems longer than it is. Um, you, you know that it's not long, but for you, for some reason, you feel like you won't make it. It's not... Um, that you lose that normal perception in that moment. And so for me, it was just like I woke up one day and I went from place A to place B. Um, and on that way, I um, lost my breath in a way. Like it was my chest started getting tighter and I couldn't breathe. Um, and I was alone outside in the street. And of course, I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what was going on. I thought maybe it was my blood work because I tend to be anemic and so uh, sometimes like you you lose breath but this was a little bit different and also I had this uh, sensation of fear that would like I, I couldn't explain what what it was because I was not afraid of anything in particular it was just a fear of everything <laughs> at the same time it's a it's a very weird feeling, but people who 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 have it, they they know what it is. Try to hop on a tram, and um, from the tram, I came to the apartment where I used to live with a roommate then, and she wasn't at home, so I was alone that whole month. And um, I was sitting in the apartment, and I remember just feeling off. I wasn't feeling like me. And um, I called my parents, I called my mother, and I said, something is wrong. I'm not sure what it is, but um, I don't feel well. And then she asked me, do, do, do you have like any pains? Does something hurt? Do you have a migraine? Because I sometimes had those. And I was like, no, I cannot explain to you what it is, but it's something strange. Like, And she was like, make yourself coffee, go outside on the terrace, try to get some air, fresh air. And that even made me feel worse. <laughs> so when I I was in the kitchen and usually the things that were very normal to me, let's prepare some coffee. Now this seemed like a challenge. Oh, where is the cup? Um, it, it was like an action that I needed to think of. It was not um, something that came naturally anymore. And then I went outside to the terrace and I remember feeling very scared of heights. And I am somebody who like climbed the the toppest of the top. So I, I was never afraid of heights. That was not something of, of like normal to me. A whole day and night I spent indoors. And um, I remember just laying in bed and trying to sleep, but my brain wouldn't shut off. It was just like my my thoughts were racing. This is bad. What is going to happen? What is happening with me? Because at that time I had some very, um, very concise plans about my future. I, I knew what, what I was going to do. And um, it felt like I was losing grip and I will not be able to do that. I will not be able to make those plans. So in, in other words, maybe uh, for people who are a little bit overly ambitious or who want to do something no matter what sometimes anxiety comes as something that slows you down on purpose or maybe something that when your body is telling you that maybe you cannot do what you thought you could and so um but it is 
you know, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It's something very, very scary. At, uh, it plays with your perception of yourself. So at that time, just um, I didn't know still what, what was happening to me. Um, the next day, I wanted to go out and take the trash out, as I normally do. And I couldn't do that. I did it, but very quickly. Um, I was just overwhelmed by the outside. I was overwhelmed by the traffic and, and people. I couldn't think about things that I, I normally would think. For example, what am I going to have for breakfast? What am I going to buy? Or what am I supposed to do today? None of those things were on my, it was just like how to go out and come inside as quick as possible without like, but there was no actual threat. So nobody was chasing me. I wasn't paranoid in a way. I wasn't thinking that somebody was chasing me. I was just uncomfortable. And um, the next thing that I noticed is that I wasn't, um, I, I was, you know, as a girl, I would do things to get ready so I would do some makeup or like brush my hair um you know dress up and then I would look in the mirror and think normally as you'd think oh maybe I should like fix my hair or maybe I should put this bag instead of the other one that was again something that I was not thinking about I would look in the mirror and be lost I I knew that it was me that I was seeing but it was a very strange feeling, like um, I couldn't connect with what I was seeing. And so, um, again, I called my parents and I was like, I don't know what to do. Um, I cannot function normally, so can I come home? And um, my mother was like, yeah, you should come home. Like, we will get to a private hospital here. We will may see maybe there's something wrong with like your blood work or something wrong with your uh, thyroid. Uh, she had a lot of like ideas on like my my health. Because as I was saying, I I I I was living very fast and I didn't take care of myself um in that way. And I remember when when I hopped on a bus to come home, I was crying the whole time. I had no idea why. Um, at that time, I was just crying that whole day without stopping. And um, when I went to the doctor, I think he thought that crying was a symptom of something that I had. He wasn't sure what. But it was actually, uh, I was crying because I knew that all of the things that I had planned and everything that I wanted to do was now something that I will not be able to do. Um, and so I was crying basically for, for my lost chance or lost life or whatever. And, um, but in, in anxiety, uh, crying is not something that necessarily happens. You don't have to cry. Usually people who experience it for the first time have no idea what is happening to them. And so they feel overwhelmed and they cry. They cry a lot. And so I remember just sitting in the waiting room and crying and people were thinking that, you know, I had some terminal illness or <laughs> that something was really wrong. They were like looking at me in a very weird way. And um, as soon as I went to the, the special with the first, I went to a cardiologist and then like all of them immediately somehow knew that um, something is wrong with the with my mind in a way the way I was functioning because I seemed very worried I looked tense I didn't look um normal in a way and so uh, my first doctor that I went to um I went immediately to a psychiatrist so I didn't go to a psychologist and I think that was really good because uh with this doctor I could talk uh, medically about a lot of things and he understood the way the brain functions and so he um I think that um he was the only one who helped me understand what was going on he asked me about how I was sleeping um he immediately knew uh, he, he targeted me as somebody who is an overachiever or somebody who was very ambitious and maybe he thought that that 
situation that I had in my life has caused anxiety, which was, I think from this point of view, very true. At that time, I had no idea. So when you're in that moment, you're lost, you're afraid. And that's why I think it's very important to talk about this. Like I said, this was 2013, 14. Um, after maybe 2017, 18, 19, especially now after COVID, I have I see so many videos about like people sharing their stories and they are talking about uh, anxiety in general and just many, many me mental states, traumas, um, healing. Uh, there are a lot of doctors who, who share their expertise, a lot of supplements that you can take. At that time, I I felt like I was the only one. Um, I had I didn't know anyone in my vicinity that had something like that um, or that I knew that was maybe they had it but they didn't know that it was anxiety maybe they thought that was normal so um, I remember just one thing that I asked my my doctor at that time and um, I asked like can you be honest with me can you tell me will I be able to live to take care of myself independently because um, I felt that everywhere that I had to go I had to go with someone um, if I went by myself I would have this overwhelming feeling of something is going to go wrong I will faint or I will um, die I will hurt hurt myself in a way maybe like my heart would start racing and I would get a heart attack or something like that so I, I wasn't in control of myself anymore up to that point I was like I said I I knew how to cook. I knew how to live by myself. I was going anywhere and everywhere alone. I, you know, went to a, different countries by myself, um, alone on, on the airplane. Um, so all of my previous experience, like I lived in New York alone. Uh, I went at night through ghettos, all of like my <laughs> stories, like I, I never had any bad experiences. So this didn't came from that. It's just, it was something that uh, was caused by, I guess, this um, the situations in my life that I had. And I'm still now, 10 years later, I'm still working on what was the actual cause. Um, for me, I think the cause was some unresolved situations that I had in my past. Um, especially in my family, my family relations, um, also my my romantic relationships and my friendships. Um, high school had to do a lot to play in that. So I was naturally somebody who, who had like a lower self-esteem and I was very susceptible to bullying and to receiving some negativity from, from people. And that kind of was implanted in my brain and it took me, it, it was for much harder for me to go forward than for some people who believed in themselves. For me, like it was always a problem to believe in myself, but still I would go further. It would just take so much energy. So I think in my case, that was maybe like I was too demanding of myself, but I was not loving myself enough um, that maybe like caused it. At the same time, it could be some lack of nutrients uh, or like bad poor sleep schedule it all comes down to it's like a perfect storm you can be in a period of life where all of that combines and it just like your body starts acting in a way that you cannot understand but I just want everyone to know whoever is experiencing this that you have to separate yourself from the state that you are in and that is the that that the way that you do that is by talking with the psychiatrist preferably even maybe a psychologist, but they will actually convince you and let, and let you know and teach you um, to trust yourself again, to know that you are okay. It's just this, um, and you're not going to be like this forever. It's just the situation that you are in currently. And I recently actually had one of my very good friends go through the same thing. So he had a, um, a very bad breakup. Uh, he broke up uh, with his girlfriend of uh, a lot of years. And um, he also went to a state of panic and anxiety and he didn't know what was going on. And he asked me because he knew that I went through that. And he asked me like, is this going to last forever? 
because a lot of people ask that, will I be the same? And for me, um, I have to say, from my experience is that, no, you will never be the same. Um, it's your life, a part of your life ends there. You as you used to be end there, because this is the first time that you see that there is something above you. You are not in control of everything. There is something that can mess up your plan, that can control you. And in that moment, you also feel that you're a mortal, that you may die, that like a lot of negative things come to your, your mind, a lot of realizations. You, you grew up very fast in the moment as well. That happened to me as I, I wish I could have. And I always say <laughs> when I look at the pictures or when I see like what I was doing previously, I was like, where was my head at? Like, if I could be that girl again, it would be, I mean, I was like a child, a grown up child. I was like 25 years old, but still acting like there was like an, no bad person in the world, acting like there is no danger just um pursuing her dreams uh it's a very very interesting state to be at but at the same time when it ends you you're left with just um a void after um a certain number of these conversations and um i went to treatment for 6 months i received um therapy in terms of medicine, but it was very small. It was like a quarter of a dose. Um, for him, it was just important for me to realize that, you know, this is not the um, permanent state. So when I started taking medications, like anti-anxiety medications, um, I I saw that I could go back to the, the state without fear. And it was just like back and forth. If I don't take the medication, I would be feeling anxious again when I took the medication I would be good and it was just like learning to live that back and forth life um, which was very hard for me because a lot of my friends at that time they had no idea what was going on they didn't understand I lost I, I lost a lot of friends I lost everything that I had um, in terms of like social relationships because um, when you have a person that is outgoing and um, they know a, a person that I was, and then they suddenly see the person that I am now. Uh, that is something that they cannot, they think I'm I'm acting, or they were maybe thinking that I was lying, that I didn't want to do something, where actually I couldn't. And I lost interest in a lot of things for that. Not Not because I didn't want to do them, it's because I was scared of having that feeling of anxiety again if I do it. So for example, if I if somebody invited me to a concert, I would say, oh, so if I go to this concert that I really want to go, I may feel anxious and bad again. So I don't want to expose myself to that. Let's just stay home. And so going back to my student, um, so in, in a certain period, maybe like even like for two or three years, I was very um, reluctant to going out, to be honest. Um, only if I had to. And that took me immense energy. Uh, I would be, feel tired all day after. So if I had to do like some chores, like go to the supermarket, post office, um, I would just be in my head so much. I couldn't, sometimes I would go back and forth, like exit the apartment, come inside and exit the apartment and come inside. Or I would like think that maybe I didn't dress well or I had to change my shoes or something. It was just like this endless, tiring, tiring actions that make you feel even worse about yourself. And then somebody told me, just go out. Just when you know that you have to go out, just open the door and go out and don't think about anything. <laughs> and sometimes I would go out even like in my pajamas or I wouldn't like... You know, I, I before I would never go out like disheveled, I would always be put together. But at that moment, I would be lost and just like go and try and try and try. And there was a point where I, I burned from trying. So I, nothing changed. I wasn't working on myself on the inside at all. I wasn't 
thinking about myself I was only thinking about what I needed to do next like how to come back to my previous life and how to continue with all of my plans and everything that I wanted to do but I, I wasn't questioning myself like why that anxiety happened in the first place what was lacking in my life um, what could I work on more I was just like pushing to go out and um nothing changed every time I would go out I would feel the same and come back in with one friend with another friend with my family I would go to a vacation um even that was that is a a, a separate video on how you can you know um just exploit those feelings of anxiety um just because you want to make yourself feel good maybe you are on a you know on a beach and you were enjoy you were, should be enjoying with your friends but um you can't because you're anxious and then it makes you feel worse and then this is like a very vicious cycle that goes back and forth and then you don't know why you know you you're watching the sunset everything is beautiful but you don't feel good on the inside for a lot of people as well uh it's about place where they are at Sometimes uh, th that is also one thing that doctor asked me, are you in an environment that you feel it's okay for you? And of course I said yes, because my my parents and my grandmother at the time and um, the community where I was living at, um, they, they were nice, you know, I, I didn't have any problems with them and they wanted to support me and help me. But in a, if you look at it in, in a bigger picture, it maybe means that who you are doesn't fit in the environment where you're at. Maybe you should be somewhere else. And um, it's like a, a right person, but the wrong place in a way. And you should also consider that maybe something that you are, you know, um, that if you're living in a country, maybe, or in a city that it is not in alignment with who you are or where you want to be that can be frustrating and that can like worsen your agoraphobia or the fear of of social anxiety for example so it's not that you can't go out it's maybe like internally you won't socialize because you don't belong there you want to socialize with something else and that is very um powerful when you recognize that because then you can work on fixing that and then if you need to move to a place, you will, you know, gather your strength and just push that one day or one week um, where you have to move and then you will see how you become a different person in a different place. There are a lot of videos on, on YouTube and TikTok and a lot of these social platforms. People are basically fighting back and forth are medications good or bad? And it's a very hard question, especially for, for somebody who, like I said, I'm not a professional in any way in this field. I can say only from my, ex my experience. Um, when you are in that state of panic, anxiety, when you're in the midst of, of that terrible feeling, and really, like I said, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, um, you need something to calm you down um, because you still don't have that, especially if it's in the beginning, you don't have that power to shut that off or to meditate in that moment or to say to yourself, everything is going to be okay, or to push through because pushing through also need, requires a lot of energy. So the easiest way is that you take a medication, um, anti-anxiety pill, for example, or something that will calm you down. Okay. So when it comes to antidepressants, again, from my experience, um, if your anxiety and depression are separate, so if they're mild in the beginning and so they, they, they don't come together as a part of another mental illness, because sometimes that can happen, then I think the smaller dose of antidepressant can be helpful because again, it will show you, it will um, not make you happy it will not come, you will not become who you were. It will not, you will not go back to who you were. Um, it will not erase your memory or anything like that. Like it, it's not a drug. You cannot like take it and listen to music and lose yourself. It's actually a medicine that um, balances you out. So it, it, it calms your overstimulated brain because you have to understand in the moment of anxiety, um, especially when you have some bodily symptoms, your brain is working 
and thinking how to help you. So it's, but it, it's not helping because um, it's like, you know, when, when you're driving a car and you have like a car crash in front of you and you are, you know, stirring the wheel left and right, trying to avoid it, but it's not helping. What you should do is like pull the brakes. Well, your brain cannot pull the brakes at, at that moment. So that's why medication can be helpful. They, they're not something that will solve your problem. Um, if you don't change your environment, change the way of thinking, think about what caused it, um, go through the process that can be sometimes very painful of healing, of understanding, breaking some relationships, making new ones, understanding your situation, being okay with, for example, in my case, not doing something, um, being okay with not succeeding in something or um, just letting go as, as they say, like Jesus take the, the wheel. So let the things happen. A lot of people that I know that are young and they're, I, I see that they're very, very ambitious. And uh, a lot of my friends are like that as well. Um, and I am like that as well. Um, but sometimes that ambition can take over and um, you don't have any other outlets in life. So your personal relationships suffer. You don't receive love from anyone. Love is really important. So in my case, I had, um, like my private life was a mess, honestly. So um, my relationships were, were terrible. My friends um, were okay, but at the same time, um, I don't think I was re receiving from them what I, I was not asking what I needed. So I didn't even know what I needed, but I needed more affection and more, more love, more support. I didn't ask for that. So um, you have to like always go back and, and see are those other things balanced in your life before you start chasing something. And also um, in capitalism, it is very hard to um, make means or uh, it's very hard to realize that time flies and that um, you may possibly not do something in a certain period. So everything is timed. You have to do this from 20 to 22 and then to 25, you have to do this. And from 25, if you're not this in 30, it's over. So a lot of people live under pressure and they want to achieve certain things at a certain time. And that pressure can also make your anxiety worse. So um, it's, it's honestly just letting go and um, wasting time. You need to learn also how to waste time um, how to just not do anything and be okay with it. For me, that was like one of the bigger things that I had to live um, and understand because I was um, I was all about planning, making to-do lists, having these journals. And if a month didn't go by without like me doing something to a approach to my goal, it was a waste month. Um, and other people around me were not living like that. My mother, for example, she is like, completely content woman she lives day by day enjoys it talks to people actually listens to people communicates uh, for me at the time I wasn't even like relating to anyone because nobody was um, understanding what I was feeling on the inside I remember before uh, maybe like half a year before I had my first anxiety attack I started feeling a little bit disconnected that's what I was the, now looking back, I, I noticed that that when I would like walk um, walk back home from from some event or from from a shop, I would just walk and I felt like I didn't belong. Um, I felt like that exactly disconnected, like in a in a certain void, in a certain bubble, um, and it didn't occur to me to call somebody and and say, hey, will you make me feel good? Let's do something together. No, I was just like thinking about the next thing I had to do on my list, and especially if, if you live in a small town, if you come from a small town um, and you want to achieve more in life, um, you want to, you know, um, fulfill the wishes of your parents and you want to 
advance in your career and achieve something and you know show for yourself and and go into the world and you know some people want to get money some people want to be successful famous whatever uh, but just get out of that situation and so going back to that is not an option for you so you may you you prefer to to literally die trying then to go back and that mindset also is a perfect field for anxiety because if you are disconnected with your where, where you come from and you you don't want to go back um you know something will happen that will make you go back if you don't um if you exert yourself too much and if if you want it too much in a way and so for a lot of years i was actually functioning um with anxiety um it was not noticeable when i see the pictures when you know when i see the things that i was doing i try to keep it you know together and continue with my life as as you normally would uh, there are some people who who just want to give it up give up and not do anything um i am not really an expert in that sense so for me i didn't experience much of depression so i cannot talk about what is it like when you cannot go out of bed um, for me it was more like i couldn't go out of bed because i was anxious so i didn't want to experience another anxiety attack again for for me what i think is that in in that moment you're not in your right mindset and you need to realize that this is me and this is depression so it's i it's not who i am and somebody needs to help you to realize that with whether it's a therapist usually it's a psych psychiatrist or a psychologist or a very good therapist that can make you realize that this is the state that you're in and that state state is wrong so depression is not a state that you should be in it's not it's not normal but it's it's a situation that it's that happened to you but it's not you it will definitely be hard when you have to say to yourself i mean there are thousands of the different things that come through through your mind like why me why now when is this going to end um am i going crazy um what will people think will i have to quit my work i will lose everything i i embarrassed my parents there's so many things that you know are in your mind at that moment but you just have to um it's almost like um visually i can describe it as like a hurricane maybe like when 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 you were standing there i had dreams like that when you're standing in the wind and the wind is blowing so hard it kind of you it wants to take you away and you're holding on to the let's say a, a bench or something and the more it hurts the more you squeeze just be in the moment be be there um no matter how because usually during the day it will fluctuate. So at certain parts of the day, you will feel better. At night, usually, um, you in the evening, you will feel better. So you will see how your mood changes and then you will realize, aha, uh -huh, so this is not me. It's just the state that I'm in. And then, of course, if you, if you're, if you have like a severe um, form of depression or anxiety, like I said, medications always help in the beginning, but it's only to um you know get you out of the water or to teach you how to swim and then you have the rest of the journey you have to go by yourself because it's not good to get adjusted in my opinion it's not good to just um get used to medication um because normally as you grow with your state as you grow with anxiety you will become stronger and then you will you know a couple of years later you will be um able to control it by yourself also working with japanese students i heard that in japan uh, there is this um, phenomenon that is called hikiko mori um, which is basically um those are people who um refuse to go outside uh, of their house completely so they don't want to rejoin the society in any way. They're not interested in anything. They are perfectly happy 
um, a lot of them are not actually in, and they don't have anxiety or depression. They're not sick. They just don't want to go outside of their house. And for me, that was really fascinating um, because they can live for like 30 years like that without ever going outside. Um, and I watched some of the documentaries and I realized a lot of them are actually supported by their parents and friends. Um, and I, of course, I understand Japanese society is very different as as I realized it, um, you're you are under a lot of pressure to do certain things in life and to become, to be in a certain way. And if you're different, um, then society does not accept you uh, very well, or you have to prove to yourself more. And some 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 people just don't want to do that, um, and they they quit. Uh, they prefer not to see anyone. So I would say that in the in the Western countries as well, um, in the rest of the world, we definitely have people like that. And when you are in the state of anxiety and depression, you also may feel inclined to just stay inside. You don't, you, you feel that it would be better for you and for everyone else. Um, your emotions and your feelings are just like uh, augmented anyway. So you, you already are overwhelmed with everything and you don't, you, you feel that you cannot cope with a lot of stimulation. So just imagine having anxiety and have to change metro stations and then going to work and seeing like 50 people in one room and then receiving orders, having to complete that. If you're a journalist, for example, having to write something constructive in that environment and then, you know, wait for the the editor to check that and then redo it. And then, so it could be, it can be a lot of stress. So a lot of people just want to change that completely and they um, stay in, indoors. It can be very bad for your mental health to not uh, receive any stimulants from the outside, just uh, to be online and uh, being focused on, from my personal experience, that that is what I've noticed because sometimes when I would um, stay more indoors for a month or two or three, I could feel that my 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 mood was changing and the way I was thinking was changing and not for the good. It was a lot of the times for the bad and I would um I would almost be desperate to to do something to to move in a way even if I was scared out of my mind um to you know go into a taxi and to go someplace to take photographs sometimes I would do it. Uh I would push myself to to do it. And so uh, it's it's not necessary to push yourself, but you should push yourself a little bit, just not to, in order um, to avoid staying in that comfort zone too long. Um, because too much comfort is not good. Eventually, um, we live in reality, so life will push you out. You will have to go to the dentist or you will have to do something for your family. And um, in situations like that, then your anxiety, you're not doing yourself a favor. Your anxiety can skyrocket and, and be higher than before. So it, it is good to like even walk outside of your apartment building for maybe like five minutes, walk your dog, go to the end of your street, talk to your friend, call them on the phone, maybe even ask them for to come to visit you. You always have one person it can be somebody from your family that that um you can communicate with um that so that you can hear real conversation real voice uh instead of just like watching series and youtube and, and staying indoors to stop here because the video will be too long but um i will maybe make i will definitely make one more video about like because I stopped at the half of, of my experience. There was so much to say until 2023, especially during COVID. Um, but I, before I couldn't even talk about this, I didn't know what to say or just the thought of going through that again in my mind is so hard, especially now it's winter. So during winter, you we tend to feel worse because the days are shorter. Um, you're losing your serotonin and vitamin D. Um, so a lot of people, even who are not 
who never experience anxiety and depression can go into that lower mood uh, during this period. So for me, like um, being okay now and talking about this, it's a big breakthrough, I have to say. And um, one more advice would be to definitely be open to other people um, because we're all humans. We are um, all the same deep down so uh, these states especially anxiety panic attacks uh, depression can make you want to alienate yourself because there you think there may be something wrong with you or nobody nobody would understand you or sometimes you think that others are to blame for how you feel um, and that can in a moment be very rewarding uh, you may say to yourself ah, they're not going to see me today or I won't tell them anything or I won't call them. Um, and you may feel like powerful, but in the long run, um, alienating for pe from people will only make you feel worse and anxiety will grow for, for sure. So there is one uh, song from a band called Morchiba uh, there is a line that says, um, fear can stop you loving, love can stop your fear. And I always remember that line because it is true. Um, the way anxiety is actually too much fear in your system, a lot of fear about everything that you have and that manifests through your body. And why the fear is there is because some form of love is missing whether it's love towards yourself or to what you're doing to other people, you're not getting what you are supposed to get. So um, when you, you fill that void with some form of love, your anxiety will reduce little by little. And there is other friend that told me, um, be humble. And in that time when she told me that I was... <laughs> thinking about why is she telling me that? Like, does she think that I'm not humble? But what she meant is that um, when when you're, when you get into that state of anxiety, when, when anxiety resets you, in a way you have to start small. So you have to be happy, happy about that coffee that you're making. You have to be happy for the snow that is outside. Maybe that you didn't notice that before. Like small things that again are, human and common to a lot of us um you have to kind of go back to the basics and from there um because from the state of anxiety wherever you were thinking of going higher you can't you will not go anywhere it will only be worse um you can only go down um and back to the basics and then from there once you heal and your anxiety starts reducing, then you can think about going somewhere where you were planning to go. A lot of people don't think like that and they take medications. Um, they actually uh, abuse them. They abuse alcohol. They take drugs just so they can, you know, reduce that feeling of anxiety. And that was something that will keep them going. And um, so they can complete their their dream. But um, in the long run, your body will suffer. So it will always bring you back to where, where you're supposed to be. All right. I hope this was not too much and that was helpful uh, and understandable. If, if, you know, somebody who's watching this or some of my students or um, anyone who is experiencing anxiety at this moment, I... Um, I know it's going to be okay and I wish you all the best and I'm sending you um, tons of positive energy and, and healing. Um, I know when I was going through this, there was one uh, girl on YouTube um, and she was filming her anxiety day by day, every day, even when she was having panic attacks, she was filming herself and I discovered her videos for <laughs> just by accident and whenever I would feel bad, when, when I would sink back into anxiety, I would just watch that and it made me feel less alone. It made me feel like if 
if she can do it, I can do it as well. And that is, if you can have that in your vicinity, it's so good. It, but if not, even if it's on YouTube, even if it's on, on your phone, it can help. So um, thank you for watching and see you soon in the next one. Take care. Bye.